Welcome to Letterbox Book Club. My name is Claire. And I'm Jubilee. <laughs> I, I didn't know what I was going to do, to be honest. I don't know. Uh, and today we will be discussing Let It Snow by John Green, Maureen Johnson, and Lauren. I say like miracle because M Y R A C L E. Oh, yeah. I think that's how I kind of. Do you reckon of... that's her pen name? I don't, that's a cool last name, though. Like, miracle. Miracle. <laughs> miracle. It's miracle. probably Miracle. We also have guest star James. As per usual. <laughs> Doesn't like to be ignored. <laughs> yeah, Kenzie can read the blurb. The blurby blurb. Three wonderful holiday romances by three of America's best selling authors, including John Green, author of the multi. I'm. Re- t- should have. I should have not started that part, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, scratch this. I'll start again. An ill timed storm on Christmas Eve buries the residents of Gracetown under multiple feet of snow and causes quite a bit of chaos. <laughs> One brave soul ventures out into the storm from her stranded train and sets off a chain of events that will change quite a few lives. Over the next three days, one girl takes a risky shortcut with an adorable stranger, three friends set out to win a race to the Waffle House and the Hash Browns, hash browns Boils, and the fate of a teacup pig falls into the hands of a lovesick barista. Love it. Thoughts, feelings, emotions. Kenzie? Uh, it is a book. <laughs> it is a book. It is a holiday book book yep it is a ya holiday book Mm -hmm. i read this again as a teenager and i have reread it as an adult and i can see why i enjoyed it as a teenager and i can see why i don't enjoy it as an adult (laughs) but it's christmas it's fun yeah 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 Yeah. and that's all what about your thoughts feelings emotions i thought it was quite fun i really (laughs) enjoyed it to be honest i didn't read this growing up so like i i'm only seeing it from like an adult point of view Mm -hmm. um well the last i guess short story I didn't really kind of care about Mm. because it's giving just every holiday movie miracle I mean but that's the point of Christmas movie you know you 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 fall in love you find forgiveness you miracles happen Mm. yeah and I I just really like the um just like a one uh, perhaps a natural event and how it affects people's lives and how people like interconnect and kind of characters know each other not necessarily butterfly effect but effect but just how like we're surrounded by the same characters who or different characters going through like the same event and like passing each other mm. and how their lives kind of I do like interconnect. stories like that. How yeah. like interconnected stories like that. And there's a few um like holiday movies like Love Actually and I think New Year's Eve is a really good one as well where yeah, there's like all these different characters and then you see how they're connected in the end. Yeah, and like good. character A might know character B in passing or mm. like their best buds with character C or they're mm. married to character F and all that type of mm. stuff. Like I love that type of stuff. Mm. I'm a sucker for it. Mm. But yeah, I found it quite fun and quirky. Um, Interesting themes as well, especially in like uh, John Green's short story, which is about um the, the venture to the Waffle House through the mm. snowstorm. Mm. But we'll get to that in a moment. I guess mm. um, but yeah, I enjoyed it I don't know I, was, I thought it was a little bit fun yeah I liked the first one the first yeah. story yeah and again like the third story I didn't really care about but yeah what are you gonna do yeah what are you gonna <laughs> do Alrighty, maybe we could just like set it up like we could talk about the first story and then the second story and then the third yep. story and then yep. we'll just see what else is to be said afterwards so we're gonna kick off with the Jubilee Express yep. which is written by Maureen Johnson firstly how did you like her writing style I guess because like they're all a bit different out of all of them, her writing style was my favourite. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I enjoyed her writing style the best. <laughs> the end. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, no, I enjoyed it. But then once I got to, like, John Green's one, I'm like, this feels familiar. You know, Yeah, his I mean, style. I don't want to talk about it I until know. I get to it, I but I have... It, yeah. um, in comparison. Thoughts. Oh, yeah, fair <laughs> I have enough. words to say. Fair enough. All good. But yeah, yeah, Maureen Johnson. Yeah, I like the story. The story is about uh, Jubilee Dougal, who is on the way to her grandparents' house because her parents were in jail yeah. for some sort of ceramic Santa. Wait, what's it village? called? It's a Floby the village. It's a Floby yeah. village. I understand. I mean, like, collectors, any sort of collectors, they're crazy fuckers, though. Yeah. So, like, makes sense. But I thought it was. Especially, just... like, not only collectors, but, like, Christmas themed collectors. Yeah, for sure. Because yeah. it's only seasonal. Yeah. And I really did. I did think there was, when I first read this as well, I thought that this was um, the John Green one. Okay, Because yep. in another John Green novel, there is um, a family um, that have the biggest, like, Black Santa collection. Oh. <laughs> so I was like, oh, so yeah. cr- Christmas-themed collections again. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's a, it's quite a theme. 
And so, yeah, so she's on the way to where her parents are in jail. Oh, no, her grandparents. And so she's on a train heading to Florida. And, and of course, the place is expected to have the worst snowstorm in 50 years. Yes, I mean, of, of course. course. <laughs> and so the train gets stuck on, like, a snow pile and they have to cut the power. And so everyone on board kind of scatter and kind of make their own way to other places. Um, on this train, we meet Jeb, who is relevant. It, yeah, it becomes story. relevant. This yeah. is where, yeah. where things is, become yeah, interconnected. Yeah, things are starting to connect, yeah. There are a bunch of cheerleaders, and then the Waffle House becomes quite significant as well. Mm. And Kuhn. Kuhn? Kuhn? Kuhn, yeah. Yeah, whatever his name or is. Or like, Jub- uh, Jubilee calls her Don Kuhn. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and Jubilee is a little bummed because she was expected to celebrate Christmas with her boyfriend, Noah, having a, what was it, smorgasbord? Yeah, they have a <laughs> yearly Christmas smorgasbord, which apparently goes off. Because um, they're Swedish. And if anyone doesn't know what a smorgasbord is, it is essentially just like a buffet. Yeah, no, I know. I messaged Kenzie yesterday. I'm like, what the fuck is a smorgasbord? I thought because you <laughs> what know, happened like to the hello? Sm- smorgies. Smorgies. In Geelong. Oh, I did. Yeah. Is that where it kind of comes from? Smorgasbord. Yeah, that's where it's called. Oh, smorgies. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was just a funky little little name. Nah. But nice. Oh well, the more you know. Yeah. <laughs> the cat's being annoying. All the distractions. And then while Jubilee's on this adventure, you know, she's trying to contact Noah, and Noah seems to not give two shits about her situation yeah, or what she's like, been through. I'm busy. I'll call you later. Yeah. or Whatever. And but. Jubilee is trying to justify it because he's like he's a really busy kid. Like he's like the perfect kind of or he's like an all-rounder kid apparently you know athletic yeah. smart yeah all that type of yeah. stuff but he's just really in the re- sense of a relationship quite dumb mm. and it would be their one year anniversary because they met oh, at the well, yeah Eve. he invited well they started dating because oh. he invited yeah. her to the small yeah. yeah. so it's like what happened in that year mm. what happened to the original pl-? so then along the way she meets a guy named Stuart so, at the waffle house mm-hmm. he works at target and he offers her to some sanctuary at his house yeah, because he says come spend the night at my house but like ask the one girl but not everybody else yeah. <laughs> you know? um well it comes up later why yeah 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 um what do you think of this <laughs> it's just the situation of a kid just being like you're coming to my house <laughs> yeah i would have before i left with him i would have been like okay but let me like talk to your mum first mm. Like, before I go to your house. Yeah, it seems very, this is not the word, but, like, yeah, nonsensical, where it's, like, in what real in world? In what world, yeah. Um, but, of course, this is fiction, so yeah, who cares? Yeah, and I understand, like, he shows her his ID and stuff, and he's like, I work I at Target. Funny. Yeah, and, like, not everyone can work at Target. And, yeah. like, it's like, okay, yeah, I trust you, because you work at Target. Yeah. And he's funny. <laughs> yeah, and he's funny. But, yeah, so they go on back, and it's I, fi- I found it quite um uh, funny, I guess, when uh they get back, and she's in the shower, and she realises when she gets out that there's, like, clean clothes and she's like yeah. oh my god did Stuart come in here while I was naked and take yeah. my clothes and give me fresh clothes <gasps> what is the going panic. on the panic and it's like you've just met him like you don't know him yeah even if he saw you naked it's like okay but then yeah. it turns out it was his mum anyway but. yeah yeah and even just their adventure to his place like all the even in all those stories like everyone's per- out and about perusing in this fucking snowstorm it's like just stay home yeah stay in one place yeah don't go out in the worst storm in 50 years yeah Especially or at the least storm. the worst case because the waffle house isn't so far from mm. the train so that's where you stay that's where you sit put mm. and not just yeah fucking go anywhere and but also yeah. yeah they fall in a pond yeah like I guess. A, and it's a like creek yeah it's like you could have died yeah <laughs> oh, but it's a it's a shallow creek it, it was only up, it was only up to her her, her chest, chest and his yeah. and his waist. Yeah, but what if it wasn't clear? I know, but <laughs> I know that's like I don't know an irrational fear of mine. Not that I'll, you'll ever see me on a fucking frozen lake or a frozen creek, but it's a fear to fall down the hole and mm-hmm. not be able to submer- uh, mm-hmm. emerge from the hole that you fell down. Yeah, and those types of movies as well, like that have those particular scenes, like they always stress me out. And any time in a film that they're ice skating and they're on a lake, you yeah, know it's yeah, gonna happen. Yeah, yeah, no, no there's gonna be a crack. It also oh. happens in another novel. Oh, oh, that, oh, that way. That's okay. I think. I don't know if it's on the list, but oh, heartbreaker. Okay. We should add it to the list. No. Oh, heartbreaker. Icebreaker. Icebreaker. Okay. Oh, yeah. Sorry. sorry. Uh-huh. <laughs> wrong. Wrong. <laughs> Wrong book. But yeah, so anyway, and Jubilee is trying very hard to contact Noah and being like, look, this is what's happening. Like, my parents are in jail. They've got nowhere to go. Like, the my grandparents don't know I'm here, all that type of stuff. And then, yeah, Noah's like, I'll call you back. I'll call you back. So now Stuart is getting very apprehensive about this Noah guy. He's kind of like, wow, sounds like a shit boyfriend, which, yeah, he, he does. And then he eventually opens up to Jubilee about 
uh, his own, like, woes. Oh, no, actually his mum. They meet his mum. Yeah, because Jubilee keeps bringing up his girlfriend mm. because she saw, like, in his wallet that he had, like, a photo of him and a girl. And then every time she brings the girlfriend up, he, like, kind of deflects off it. And she's like, oh, like, why wouldn't you want to talk about your girlfriend? Like, mm. I talk about Noah all the time. And so, mm. Mm, okay, something is going on there. Yeah, something is sus. Yeah. What did you think? Did you think anything, like, hi- heinous was there? Or? I thought, no. I didn't think it was anything, like... Like, she died. Yeah, no. <laughs> like, but I thought ago. maybe, like, it wasn't his... Like, maybe, oh, like, that was his sister or something something and oh, like yeah. and then I was like oh maybe they just yeah broke up a 16 year old like heartbreak is the worst thing in the world yeah. <laughs> which yeah his mum does tell her that like yeah they broke up and like I haven't seen him happy, happy since he was sitting with you on the couch because of course yeah of course the mum endorses a yeah underage relationship yeah oh and I think they have this whole family thing they're a Jewish family they're one of two Jewish families in this community yeah. apparently and like she T- they technically yeah. don't celebrate Christmas as a religious holiday, but like they celebrate it, they put it on, and they make it like grand and big and fantastic. So yeah, and she has the Floby Village. Yeah, she does, and they bond over that. Mm. And and Jubilee is like, oh, you got you know this edition number five mm. or whatever. Oh, we don't have yeah. that or something. Oh, and like it's that. also interesting as well because um at the start she introduces herself as Julie yes. because she doesn't want to say my name is. Jubilee. Yeah. Because she's like, it's a stripper name. Not that yeah. I have anything against strippers, but yeah. it's a stripper name. But then um she calls her parents in jail. Yeah. <laughs> um and then but they talk to Stuart's mum and then she like they obviously find out that her name is in Jubilee. Yeah. And cuz she's named after like a Santa village or something of the Floby. Yeah, the Jubilee Hall from yeah. the Floby village. Yeah, 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 man. Oh, and uh, yeah, the parents were quote unquote, allegedly part of a riot because people, these fucking collectors are crazy, dude. Yeah. And, and it's just like they weren't part of it, they just didn't disperse. Yeah, yeah. So they were arrested. Because they were being stubborn trying to get their pieces, yeah. I guess. And they've been dubbed the Floby Five. Yes. So Jubilee's parents, well, Stuart finds them a bit funnily famous, yeah. you know. Also, um, Jubilee's boyfriend Noah calls her Lee. Yeah, I got really confused when he first said, Lee, like, I'm doing something. I'm like, who the fuck is Lee? Yeah. <laughs> Um, but then I was like, why wouldn't you introduce yourself as Lee yeah. then, like, instead of Julie? But Yeah, I don't but, like, know. Like, it's like Julie, you could be like, oh, no, I said Jubilee, like, really fast. Like, Jubilee. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Julie, Jubilee. It's like, you know, that, that TikTok. It's of, of Barbie and it's Ken saying, like, oh, fuck yeah, or it's Barbie. Fuck of, like, the, yeah. she needs to blend her name so uh, much where you hear one of the other. Laurel, Laurel and Yanni. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is the, the, the blue gold dress all over again. <laughs> If she, if that's if she mentions her name very fast. <laughs> but yeah, like, yeah, I don't know. And when characters use nicknames of the main character and we don't even, like, we hardly know the character, yeah. that, that irks me. So yeah. It's like, why the fuck are you calling I think me? in all the stories, I'll just say this, like, very quickly, like, uh, the characters aren't explicitly introduced as to who they are. No. So I got really confused. And then even in um the John Green story, like, it takes, I think, even, like, three chapters until you find out that the guy's name is Tobin. Yeah. Because he just says, like, oh, the Duke and JP and I. Yeah, yeah, and It's yeah. like, who are you? I'm like, like who's yeah, I'm I? Just waiting I was waiting. I was like, I can't figure out like the genders or anything about what's going on here. Yeah, and same with uh, Addie's mm. story, and we'll get to that because it took a while and until a character addressed her as like Addie, blah 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, I get that. Um, but at least with Jubilee, it was quite off the bat, which was nice. And again, I guess it just also highlights the different writing styles of the authors and all that type of stuff as well. So, um, so yeah, Stuart and Jubilee, you know, yeah, bond over their Floby. Um, Stuart has a little sister named Rachel, Rachel, who is like five years old. But of course, children are way smarter than they actually are oh, of in, course, books. in books. <laughs> uh, and the mum gets a feeling that they like each other and she's all making these comments. And yeah, it's and like, the mother, yeah, conveniently um, takes Rachel outside for two hours in the snow yeah, on Christmas yeah. um, so that Stuart and Juby can um, <laughs> spend some time together. Why do you say Juby? <laughs> It's just, it's just too quirky. <laughs> okay. Um, so can, canoodle. Yeah. Um, and they were playing Mousetrap because that was one of Rachel's presents. Anyway, but it's funny because when the mum comes back inside, she's like, oh, like, how'd you guys go or whatever? And she's like, oh, we played Mousetrap. And she's like, oh, is that what the kids are calling it these days? Because <laughs> yeah. they did kiss. Yeah, they did. Because yeah. Juby um, broke up with her Noah. Yeah. Um, yeah, because... Um, he doesn't give a shit about it. Yeah, Stuart. I was going to say Clark. Who's Clark? <laughs> anyway, because Stuart was like, he's going to break up with you. Like, every time you try to call him, he, like, brushes you off. He's like, your parents are in jail. You've been, like, stranded it's on a train. You've experience. nearly died. Yeah, and he doesn't give a shit. So she calls, and then it's just like, well, I'm breaking up with you. And he's like, okay, well, like, I have been thinking about it, blah, blah, blah. And then, yeah, and so then Juby and Stuart slash Clark. <laughs> um, 
Good old Clarky. Do a little bit of a smoochy smooch. Yes, because they realise they both kind of like each other. And pretty much Stuart gave, or Clark apparently, <laughs> gave Jubilee the kick in the ass of like, yeah, uh, if he really cared about you. He went on this whole like monologue spiel about, I would do this, I would do that if I was your boyfriend, blah, 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 blah. Mm. And yeah. yeah, so that prompted her to bite yeah. the bullet. And then Jubilee, yeah, like is coming to the realisation that, yeah, she's like, oh, I've actually been talking about myself. Like Clark has been asking me these questions. <laughs> it's just Clark from now on has been asking me these questions about myself and I'm actually talking about myself she's like for the last year I haven't spoken about myself because it's all been it's all been about oh Juby and Noah at this event Juby and Noah at that event like it's mm. never just been like Juby and Noah like yeah. spending time together so yeah. she hasn't been like asked about yeah. herself but then so they kiss and then she gets scared mm. so she tries to run, run away, away. So funny. <laughs> you're so running away from funny. a stranger's yeah. house and like, like where are you gonna go back to the waffle like you've got nowhere to go back to the waffle house so the where he knows yeah it was so funny. And then obviously Stuart then uh, clarify or Clark clarifies <laughs> his backstory. Um, he was heartbroken because his ex-girlfriend Chloe cheated on him. Um, they were like study buddies as well and he got suspicious that she, or he was worried that she wasn't, you know, she didn't meet up with him to study when they arranged it. So they went to Starbucks because they like going to Starbucks. He talks to the barista, Addy. <laughs> Is like, have you seen Chloe? And then Addie's like giving him like sad eyes. And then he's he like, waits. Why would you be sad about me asking about Chloe? Yeah, exactly. And then he sits and waits for her. And then I think. Well, she says, he, Addie says, um, oh, she's with the cougar. Oh, something. it's something like that. Yeah, yeah. but they're. Oh, in no, the, she's in the bathroom. And then, yeah, yeah he's he like, waits. Why would you be sad about the bathroom? And then he waits. And then the cougar comes out of the bathroom. And the cougar is the mascot yeah. for Grace Town. Yeah. And yeah, so they come out. So she's, yeah, she cheated on him. Also. And, very bold of Chloe. Like, if you're going to cheat in a public bathroom, yeah, don't go to the Starbucks where, yeah, like, no. you know that like people from your high school work. Like, I mean, I think Grace. I think it's called yeah, Grace Town. Yeah, um, it's a reasonably small. I'm gonna guess like a rural esque area where yeah. everybody knows everybody, and there's not a lot of places you yeah. can go. I imagine it's like Geelong. Yeah, probably. And um, I'm just exposed. Like, I've just what's it called? <laughs> I've just doxed us. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, we said smorgies. People yeah, we said smorgies. Yeah. So yeah, I imagine like it's like a Geelong, and so like all these kids like they're in high school. Yeah, it's like <laughs> our friend group. Like yeah, we knew where everyone worked. Like we yeah. all knew each other. Like yeah, yeah, and yeah, just very, very bold in a public bathroom. Like, yeah. is that not sus? And I think Clark said he pictured, um, or was it Jubilee? I don't know. Pictured well. well Clark was telling the story. Uh, one of them pictured them in the like cougar outfit. Yeah. So like furry <laughs> confirmed. Why? <laughs> but yeah, no, it was heartbreaking. But then like, I'm gonna stick with Stuart. Stuart was saying how um, Chloe kind of berated him in front of everybody, and he didn't like react or say anything. So he felt like it seemed like she was telling the truth. Yeah. I, I forget like why in intricate detail, but it's, maybe it's something like uh, like I don't know. It seemed like really menial and very silly. Yeah, well, yeah, she just, like, stood there and, like, took it. Yeah. And so he's just like, okay, well, obviously, like, you can love me. Yeah, for sure. But that's no reason to cheat, or is it? Taylor tell Swift wrote high infidelity. That's <laughs> alleged, you know? Allegedly. Um, um, no, that's got to be confirmed. Confirmed. <laughs> Hashtag confirmed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, and then, yeah, that's... Don't that's, shit in there. <laughs> that's not the litter box. That's not the, the litter box. The kinetic sand is not the litter box. <laughs> and then that's what we have for the first book. It was a pretty good Kickstarter. You know, oh, yeah. it's the theme of, like, uh, realising your self-worth and, like, and who really loves you and that mm. type of thing. And I hope all the best for Juby and Clark. <laughs> <laughs> on moving their, forward. On their grand adventure moving forward. Well, yeah, I think Grace Town is only, like, 30 minutes away from where Juby actually lives. So yeah, so... It won't be hard to... And it's really a other. quick train ride, yeah. not in a storm. Yeah, so. exactly. So it's fun. And um, yeah. So yeah, I did also really enjoy the Jubilee Express. So it set me up to have high expectations, and then those expectations were not met. <laughs> okay. So yeah, now we're moving on Tea. to a <laughs> cheer-tastic Christmas miracle yeah. by John Green. Alrighty. Thoughts, feelings, emotions on the John Green chapter. I am looking forward to this. Oh no, the microphone's up to the mouth. That she's gonna go off. Pop off, Queen. I've always I love John Green. I will start with that. Uh, his book, Looking for Alaska, changed my life. Um, however. <laughs> however. I haven't read his most recent book, so I can't speak on that. But all his other books have, like, the same premise of, like, there's, like, a mystery, an adventure, a tragedy, and it's solved. In, in the name of, like, falling in love as well? Yeah. Okay. Also. <laughs> Oh, the stands are going to come for me. Um, Cancelled. Yeah. Uh, uh, 
the way he writes women, <laughs> uh, they are inherently manic pixie dream girls. Mm-hmm. Um, they're for, not like other girls. Yeah, for anyone who doesn't know what a manic pixie dream girl is, it, uh, they're not really a pick me. Um, it's like a guy's girl. Um, and they exist solely to uh, like progress the narrative of the main male protagonist. So they're very two-dimensional characters. Yeah. Um, first of all, he said the R word. He did, yes, in this book. Yeah. I, have, I have a photo. Yep. Um, <laughs> Cancelled. Cancelled. There's also a joke made about uh, Lindsay Lohan being promiscuous. Mm-hmm. I will say I, I won't say the exact joke because it's shit. Um, what? What? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Slut shaming. Yeah, slut shaming. Very slut shaming. And then also, again, like it took so long to um, find out what Tobin's name was. (laughs) I was in my head, I was calling him Tobin. (laughs) Tobin. (laughs) Tobin. Tobin. Um, Yeah. That's called feelings and emotions. Are we going into the plot? You do your thoughts about the feelings and emotions. Ow! (laughs) (laughs) Ow! (laughs) Sorry. It just comes across very musical. <laughs> just <laughs> not into it. Ah! Don't <laughs> eat, Claire. Stop it. I this pl- yeah, look, when I said in my earlier first thoughts, feelings, emotion, emotions, yeah, there are some issues that kind of arises in this uh, short story. But I did like the sense of adventure, even though it was very, like, gimmicky and just comical and, like, of course, everything that goes wrong went wrong you know and it's like a, a race of against time moment but they do you know dive into the just like the dynamic of those three the, of the friend group so we've got duke also known as angie well, got angie J- also known as duke or, like, <laughs> angie uh, whatever uh jp who is a bit of a is an asshole a bit of a dickhead but he is korean so a bit of rep <sighs> yeah a bit of rep with the korean but that doesn't excuse the fact that he's a sexist misogynist piece of shit yeah and then we've got Tobin, who is kind of just like, he doesn't double down on what JP says, but he, um, he's like, he doesn't, call him out. doesn't call him out. So it, he's not, not better, no better than him almost. But yeah, and Duke, it's just, it's an interesting relationship dynamic because Duke is seen as like one of the boys and a lot of her quarrels throughout, I'm just kind of weaving out yeah. of my thoughts yeah, and emotions. Right. But yeah, she's weaving into the whole, oh, uh, Tob- Tob- Tobin? Tobin? Tobin. Tobin. No, this is Tob- Tobin because of Clark. Tobin. <laughs> um, Tobin. Yeah, she goes through the motions of, because uh, Tobin doesn't recognise her as like, she or she feels he doesn't recognise her as like a woman or, yeah. or just like a, a, a okay. girl. And um, so she's fighting with that because I think Tobin makes comments in regards to her because she was always like a bit of a tomboy growing up and all that type of stuff and she has that sort of like hard tough kind of attitude and all that and she got her nickname because there's like a convenience store or whatever called like the duke and duchess Mm -hmm. and like instead of yeah saying sir and ma'am they say duke and duchess um and so yeah one day angie went in and she was like you know a tomboy in like baggy jeans and stuff and t-shirt and she got called duke so then it just stuck yeah 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 and and yeah she's just she's described as one of those girls who doesn't really like discuss boys or talk about like anything she particularly enjoys like she's not it she's not like the girly girl not into the pinks and dresses and that type of stuff yeah. oh i just realized again another joke that was made as well because they're watching a uh, tom cruise movie or whatever james bond james oh my god sorry <laughs> what a mix up what a mix it. up i love it <laughs> they're watching a james bond movie <laughs> anyway and they say that whoever is playing james bond is like attractive or whatever mm. and then they're like that's so gay which one yeah. inherently in itself like is it how is response? that so gay like i've had conversations with people who yeah. say like that's so gay and i'm like okay well explain to me how that is homosexual yeah anyway yeah. so you seem to know a lot about it <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, like, yeah, in, yeah. In, in that type of comeback, yeah comeback. um so one like that joke and then also yeah like um She's like, well, I'm a girl. It's not gay. So, yeah. yeah so, yeah. lots of those sorts of things. And then the boys are also talking about um, – because they go, they've go, they gotten this call from Kuhn um, about um, – Or Kean. Kean. Yeah, about um, the cheerleaders at the Waffle House. So, they're, like, on their way. And to jog the memory, the – Le- the cheerleaders that were stranded on the train and have made their way to the Waffle House with Jeb and Julie. Although at this point, Julie, Jib, Julie, Julie's gone. And so the whole premise of this chapter is Kian, yeah, calls them up and is like, there's a bunch of like hot cheerleaders in their uniforms, blah, blah, blah. Very like sexist vibes at the Waffle House. You guys got to come. I have another worker who's calling his buddies and the first lot of friends to get there will get to hang out and canoodle with the cheerleaders. 
So it's a bit of a race against time. And then that's all JP ever like talks about is like we need to get to the hot cheerleaders they're yeah. waiting for us blah 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 yeah and so then yeah at one point like duke slash andy does say like can you not can you stop talking about this like um yeah, she has a go yeah, at jp yeah I love like that do you though. yeah have the need for like to be rubbing on girl flesh all the time or whatever like please just stop talking about it. like i'm right here yeah 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 because yeah. she's one of the boys and they can get away with talking yeah very uh snarkily about other women and stuff or objectifying women i guess yeah. i should say and then in the end almost they just all talk, like Keon and JP, they just talk about, oh, we're going to meet these hot chicks, blah, blah, blah. But then, like, they don't interact with them at all. Yeah. And, it's, and there's, oh. yeah, also a moment where, um like, Duke is walking in front of them um and Tobin, like, remarks, like, oh, like, she does look like a girl. Like, she mm. walks like a girl. And then, like, he's, like, kind of having an existential crisis. Like, oh, my God, like, what is happening? Like, yeah. I'm sure, like, my cousin walks like that, but, like, she walks like this, like, yeah. blah, blah. Um, what did you think of, like, the... uh subplot of like the twins in like the car again i thought it was very gimmicky yeah whims non non nonsensical and like again everyone's out and about in this fucking storm like yeah. stay home and also the parents in both stories like where the fuck are they they're gone well yeah um, um they're not around in the first one they were in jail and then oh, yeah, in this tr- one yeah. they're stuck I mean, that's in fair. boston yeah yeah. Um, yeah yeah that's fair yeah but, yeah, but again, twins, in what world? <laughs> but yeah, in the twins thing, I thought it was just silly. Yeah, and I was like, it can be an adventure just, like, walking through the snow and, like, yeah. falling over or something or, like, getting lost because you can't see the roads or the signs. Yeah. Like, yeah, you don't need to add this other element of, yeah, like... because it's dangerous as yeah, well, like, driving yeah. in snow and, and ice and, like, just getting up the hill and, like, going backwards in reverse, yeah. like... Like, surprising. It's a surprise they're not fucking killed or whatever. And then yeah. they crash into a snowbank. Yeah, and the car is totaled, essentially. And, like, yeah, I don't care about the, these twins who are trying to race them to the Waffle House to be with the cheerleaders. Yeah, because they're college guys, and the yeah. cheerleaders are high schoolers. Uh, I don't think these... I think these guys... But these guys knew Duke. They said hello oh. to her and stuff, so I think these are high schoolers, but there are other college guys that oh, were bringing beer. Okay. Yeah, and it was just... Yeah, I mean, it was fun in the sense it's, like, a race against time against these friends, yeah. but, yeah, I don't really care about these twins and, you know... Yeah, and, again, because I already have that added pressure of, like, Keen like calling them and being like, like you need to bring twister as well like yeah it's really stupid. yeah and but yeah. it's like also like the other guys haven't left like or left yet or whatever and it's like that could have been the time crunch in itself like yeah. him calling them like you need to get here like it didn't need to yet have that added yeah and they're just weirdly obsessed with the game twister because i suppose you can get pretty in, in innocuous situa- yeah. situations or places or mm. i don't know what i'm trying to say like standings i guess in scenarios twister. scenarios that's it yeah, yeah. <laughs> remember beanbag twister <laughs> I remember memories, that was eh? my first night <laughs> yeah. they played it and I was like this is a great way to get to know this everyone is, this is weird yeah yeah right up in every everybody's grill mm. love it and then it's like it's so strategic because it's yeah. like well I want to touch you so yeah or I want to just be close to you or yeah um, but yeah I don't know it was weird but yeah then there was the whole other yeah underlying kind of notion of like well because um, Duke is saying um, certain things here and there which gives you the sense oh she must like like Tobin and then there are instances yeah where Tobin's like realizing he likes Duke yeah and then also because like there's someone Billy or whatever at um the Waffle House who asked Duke to the formal so it's like oh well you like Billy Thornston or whatever oh yeah that's that's right and he's egging on her about it and she's like shut the fuck up yeah (laughs) and then she turns Billy down anyway yeah um but then yeah the ultimate thing is they get to the Waffle House she gets her friend she goes outside She's crying. She's upset because, oh, because. Um, Tobin goes and speaks to the cheerleaders and then he comes outside and he's like, what the fuck is wrong? Mm. And she's like, can you not see that Like, I'm in love with you, essentially? Yeah. like, yeah. yeah. And then they kiss and it's all very fun. It's all um, cute. And then, yeah, they like protest their love. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she's like, why say. don't you look at me like like yeah. you look at those girls? That's pretty stuff. much, yeah, her quarrels throughout the entire yeah. thing. Yeah, because she's one of the boys. And yeah, like... and I do love these kind of like declarations of... Yeah big feelings but also like and i know that it's a book but also yeah if you had an issue with him like talking about other girls being with other girls like bring that up Be yeah like, just i have it. feelings for you yeah yeah i don't know maybe it's because they're a trio yeah. and it'd be weird like when two people get together and then there's the one guy that's kind of out for a second i thought jp liked duke oh. because i think there was a moment where duke shared oh no because jp knew about billy Mm. And so to- Tobin was like, oh, why would she talk to us about JP and not me? Mm. But now looking back, it's pro- probably because she then also kind of liked Tob- Tobin. Tobin. Yeah. And yeah, she didn't want to yeah, mm. kind of mess herself up a little bit. But yeah, though, yeah, 
the trio where two people like each other, it's always kind of like an awkward situation, yeah. but kind of glad JP yeah. kind of And got also, over yeah, it. like, if they break up, like, then, like, you can't hang out anymore. Yeah, like... it's just awkward. So, but this is Christmas and Christmas yeah. Eve, so, like, they're going to be together forever, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Forever. <laughs> I mean, just look at Jubilee and Noah. Yeah, even though they're 16, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. It's a true love. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, JP, as a character, he was just fucking annoying. Yeah, it wasn't he. Yeah, he's just, like, yeah, making sexist comments and jokes, and, yeah, Duke does go off at him, I which is like fantastic. I feel like there's always, like, there's always that kind of side character in John Green books as well. Like, That's again, a bit in controversial. In Alaska, there's that guy, um, who's not so much controversial, but the one that, like, kind of makes, like the like things that no one else would say like oh uh, yeah um and then in ah. paper towns there's one in looking for catherine there's one Maybe. abundance of catherine's that's the one looking for catherine <laughs> looking for catherine yeah, like catherine. That's they're, they're fucked off on alaska now they're looking for catherine yeah. <laughs> but yeah now nah, just john green's writing style I, it's been a hot minute since i've read a, anything from john green there's and so much describing yeah. And, like, little dialogue. I, I thought he had a, a quite a bit of dialogue as well. It's just in the action sequences. Yeah, but... but, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, there's just something familiar about his writing, and it's just, like, I don't know. I just enjoyed reading it. But, yeah, just the whole gimmick of driving in the snow, race against these twins who seem like bullies, who are like, I'm going to oh, kill you. don't forget Twister. And don't forget Twister. Oh, like, yeah, it just, it was absurd. But, Bye-bye. Bye-bye. but it was fun. Shall we um, talk and then, it? oh wait, then oh. they meet Jeb at the Waffle House, oh, yeah. and, Waffle, and he has a message. He's like, he's "Does like, any of you know Chloe. Addie?" Addie, and they're like, "No, but if I see her, if if you see She's her, like, tell her I'm coming, yeah. or something like that." Yes, yeah, so I have a message for her. Tell her I'm coming. Yeah, which <laughs> comes back into play, of course. Hey, what? And then the last short story to make up this, like, this trio book is the patron of saint pigs by lauren Mir- i call him miracle yeah but yeah i didn't know they were going to talk about addy i didn't know like that's the character that they were going to go with yeah but yeah thoughts feelings emotions about the patron of pigs um <laughs> it's a very niche it's a it's very niche gimmick yeah um i i was trying to see like is this like trying to be like Christmas's past, present, and like future kind of uh, thing, like yeah. throughout all oh. of them, but like not really. No. And then like the idea of like the angel of like a miracle, like Christmas or whatever. Mm. It's just like okay, like cool. And then like, but also let me teach you a lesson. Yeah. And then, but like also, don't buy pets for people. Yeah, <laughs> they, she didn't buy. She she adopted. Well, well same Hi. thing. I love. He's about to cry, and then it's just like oh, fixed. Yeah. I yeah. mean. Massive call out on myself, um, but I feel I do relate to Addy in some things when people are like, you only care about yourself, like you don't care about others. A bit too self-centered. A bit too self-centered, and I was like, same. But yeah, <laughs> um, but yeah what about you? Um, I, I didn't really, I don't know, I just didn't really care about this. Maybe it's just the absurdity of the whole, like, uh, acquiring this teacup pig. Yeah. Because um, it's such a weird niche yeah. of a pet to want. But again, yeah, obviously the whole story is about her, you know, being selfless and mm. giving it to a friend or whatever. But yeah, just the, I don't know, maybe I'm just not into the whole idea of like an angel guiding you and teaching you a lesson. Yeah. Maybe that's not the vibe, even though it is a very heavy kind of Christmas theme in a lot of Christmas, like other movies and books and stuff like yeah. that. It was interesting, you know, it took her a while to, you know, figure out, yeah, she needed to be like selfless, but then is going on this mission for the tea pig is that enough to redeem her? Almost? Yeah. And then also like the very superficial in the like they have one fight oh yeah yeah and then she's like oh like but again like, i can relate she has a to point it. though yeah and it's like yeah again i can relate like okay we've had a fight but like okay so let's self-destruct yeah i'll go make out with someone else like yeah and then yeah, yeah. and just her relationship with like jeb and how it kind of in general just how it kind of fell apart or because yeah. he he didn't embrace like their relationship the way she did yeah like she was trying but to change to be him, like fair like one would expect a gift on their one year anniversary, no? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, and oh, Jeb is also described as Native American because there could be some different sort of cultural reasonings, but that was never really explored, but no. it's out there. Um, but yeah, the whole idea of like, oh, you shouldn't think, change for anybody. Yeah, also like that's so, I think, realistic. I was going to so. say, the whole point is to not change for anybody, yet she has to be selfless. So she has to change. Yeah. I suppose in a good yeah. mor- moral point of yeah. view. Um, like, yeah. again, like, I think that's so. Um, like accurate like good representation though of like a teenage boy like yeah 
he doesn't care about these things. Yeah, Ooh. like, and he wouldn't, like, no. Like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I think in relationships that I've had, like, it's always a conversation for us. Like, oh, like, are we mm. going to give gifts, like, on our anniversary or whatever? Yep. And, like, now, like, Luke and I, like, forget every year now. Like, oh, I think yeah. maybe we did one in two years. Yeah. And then we forgot what date it was, so we made a date up. Yeah. That's um, cute, though. Yeah. And, like, but, like, we still forget every year. Like, this year was seven years. You're both hopeless. <laughs> yeah. And it just, like, passed. And we're like, oh, yeah. okay. And, like, so. Yeah. I don't know. I guess, yeah, some people just hold on to that sort of emotion and the relevance of the date more so than others yeah. but yeah and like especially now i don't know when this book was made well i think it's like t- 2011 ish i don't know but like in this day and age now like we're all about these love languages and obviously gift giving and that type of stuff isn't jeb's kind of love language yeah. either but you know it was very interesting 2008 2008 i don't know where i got 2011 yeah. from but damn that was a long time damn. ago Abe, so like, no surprise, John Green said the R word because yeah. it was hype in that time, apparently. Yeah, it was. But yeah, no, nah, very interesting. And yeah, and ironically as well, obviously the book is about, well, this little short story is about Addie, but yeah, it's just so funny how super, yeah, self centered she is about, yeah, her relationship and like her friends are trying to help her and like, uh, she's getting defensive and yeah but yeah it's just insane i think the main premise of addy's book is she is just heartbroken because one she cheated on jeb and yeah. two jeb didn't meet up because she wrote a very big email yeah he didn't respond or and he didn't respond yeah, but he because he's been stuck on the train yes we love this sort of miscommunication uh, Dotty and Tegan are Addie's best friends and T- T- Tegan also gets a very not Tegan Addie gets a very dramatic haircut that is complimented on and talked about the entire yes, fucking time so we, we love a crisis she cuts her hair short and dyes it pink yeah, yeah that's <laughs> like, isn't, I've been there isn't that not the normal Menti B breakdown yes. <laughs> haircut that you get mm. and everyone comments on it mm. so yeah, that's always fun we love it yeah. we love a crisis yeah and it is described as Addie's crisis as well um and also she is tasked with acquiring Tegan's teacup pig, pig. Uh, that's being delivered to the grocery, not grocery store. <laughs> Could you imagine? Uh, to the pet store, and there's always there's little jokes where it's like we don't can't technically say we're selling them, we're adopting them, yeah, we're quote unquote, them. all that type of stuff. So we're just like I always like. This is the thing with like. So I'm gonna go on a bit of a tangent. Here. Go for it. With like pets and stuff. Come and drink. Um. When it's like, oh, don't shop, adopt. And it's like, but am I not adopting a pet anyway? Like, if I get it from a breeder. And it's like, even if I go to a pound, like a, yeah. like an animal shelter, like, I'm still paying the money. I was like, I understand that that goes to charity you're and still, stuff. But still, yeah, I'm still purchasing. purchasing an animal. Yeah, regardless of whether you call it adopting or yeah. shopping. Yeah, the whole don't shop aspect is they're just assuming it's all unethical. Yeah, and then it's like, if... And it's like breeders will breed anyway. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. But like the adopted dog dog could have been shopped. So like, what's the difference? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I get. Yeah. I, I get it though. Maybe back in the day of like pet shops where they assumed they weren't being treated well because you know there are seven yeah. puppies in, in a, a cage, in a cage yeah. and all that type of stuff. Perhaps. But yeah. Yeah. But like even in like gauze and stuff, they're in like cages they're and in stuff cages, anyway. Yeah. So like I don't understand. So yeah, Addy is tasked with the mission to get this teacup pig. All while wallowing in her self pity for Jeb because yeah she made the mistake she made out with Charlie old mate Charlie as it was established in the first story Addie works at Starbucks yes. and that's where she spends a lot of her time in this book as well yes I want to know for reasons okay. so are we, you just are you just allowed as an author to throw in Starbucks in a book or do you have it's to it's 2008 like- yes <laughs> back then you were allowed to probably are we still allowed to I reckon yeah now okay. well right now if you were to write a book right now you would have to play say call it something different obviously would you I reckon What's the, I don't I don't think I've read a more modern book in a while so I don't Ice you've read Icebreaker right Yeah Have they did they mention Starbucks or like any sort of high chain franchise They don't mention the high chain They just say like they coffee say shop. coffee shop like on campus coffee Is that not an answer in itself then But also like it starts with us had Snapchat and TikTok But like they're just social uh, social media but it's also a company yeah. I don't know I don't know dude I'm conf- uh, I, I I don't know <laughs> But back then in 2008, sure, you can say whatever you want without any sort of copyright or, yeah. like, product placement. Yeah. Maybe they did pay for product placement. We don't know. Yeah. 
So yeah, Addie works at Starbucks. She spends a lot of her time there, yeah. going through the motions of going through her regular customers and also, all that I shit. I want to talk about, wow! sorry. Wow! The ridiculousness of this plot. So, yeah, no, like, I, that's why I didn't like, like this Can you, much. like, go and pick up, like, this pig for me or whatever? And then, like, because she talks to, like, she gets distracted and she talks to this Christmas angel. Um, and then she, so she forgets to pick up the pig. It's been adopted by someone else. This is but her being selfish again. Tegan was like you need to go and get it why well, did not like Tegan call the pet store and yeah. be like hey like can you hold it like here's a deposit like yeah i think i think it was just a thing where like it was it was weird it was like yeah. it was well, a non-surprise also like being in pet stores where like they have like kittens and they're like oh they're not ready for adoption for like another two weeks or whatever and like i've been like okay well i have work on that day can i pay a deposit and you hold it until like after work and they're like no like it's first in yeah but then also like again that's the thing it's like okay well i'm willing to like pay you a deposit and like i really want to give this person a good like this person this animal a good home whereas like on the day you can just have it and come in and like be like oh that's fun i want that like yeah yeah like haven't really thought about it just on a whim yeah yeah i get that though but yeah i'd Again, we don't have like the proper Again, pet stores also, I'm these pretty days. Sure um, it was 2008, but I'm pretty sure it's very illegal to sell like miniature animals now. <laughs> probably, probably, yeah. yeah they, they've had the trend. Yeah, they're gone now. Um, and yeah, just a very obscure thing for Tegan to be obsessed with, like a pig. Um, but My yeah, mum was, was obsessed with them for oh, a long nice. time. Yeah, but then you've, we found out that like I'm pretty sure they're not real. Like they grow up to be big anyway. Oh, uh, just like not maybe. As big. Sure, maybe surely they've been breeded out. Yeah. Now to, to a sp- fi- refined yeah. species of teacup yeah, pig. Well, because I was on this, I was actually at this farm a couple of weeks ago wow. for a kid's birthday party. They had three pigs. She Bloody was like, their previous owner was told that they would only grow to be like minis, mm-hmm. but then they, they full size hogs. Yeah, they weren't lied to. <laughs> yeah, so I think yeah, like it's a gimmick. Yeah, but I have like heard of yeah, obviously teacup pigs before, mm. and I think I may have seen like mini ones. Yeah. I think I think there's like dwarf pigs, but again, like they still they don't get like big big boy, but they still oh, yeah. grow to like an average sized dog maybe. Right. Yeah. yeah like, but yeah, I think I swear uh, on a news program there was like a famous yeah. teacup pig or like because you know how people uh, post about yeah. their animals and stuff. Like there's a, a famous teacup pig. I'm pretty sure oh. that is a thing. I did not dream of that. But yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if yeah, teacup anim- size animals are like yeah illegal and banned because you have to breed it that way and like yeah. how do you do that I don't know. but yeah and obviously in trying to acquire this pig Addie forgets and mm-hmm. um and this is also part of her whole story of like you're so selfish you're so you think about yourself you don't care about yeah. you know the other things about other people you don't care about what is it dotty mm. and Tegan. Tegan that well um very self-centered and then yeah she she's serving at her starbies and she meets oh no it auto-corrected i forget what her name was this old lady starts with m i forget i'm gonna call i'm gonna i'm gonna call her myrtle because it sounds familiar it's not myrtle but old lady myrtle just like clark yeah just like clark she i think even Earlier, like, she's talking with Dottie and Tegan, and then Dottie talks about, like, this whole angel thing, maybe. Mm. Like, an angel miracle. And so, yeah, Myrtle comes in, and she's, like, you know, she, that wise. She yes. kind of, in a sense, knows what's going on with Addie because, you know, um, of course she does. And then, yeah, she describes as being, like, an actual angel that, mm. like, works for things mm-hmm. or f- works for a, a company or something. Wow. And, like, like, there's a course to be, like, an angel or something like that. It was something weird, and I'm, like... Are we str- are we trying to like modernize this whole angel thing? Like it's supposed yeah. to be like a whimsical miracle type of thing, but like is it like though? Because there's um like I know there's like Salvation Army programs oh. to be a Christmas angel, and it's like where you can like adopt a family for Christmas, and you like you buy gifts for them, and like they oh. don't know like it's all anonymous. Right, I didn't think of it as a charity aspect. You that thought makes of it as- <laughs> I just thought of it as like I don't know. Oh well, I, I did have a small sense of charity, but like yeah. not in the way you explained. <laughs> they explained it I don't know weirdly, but yeah, and so she. She obviously has a, a great insight about Addie without knowing <laughs> anything about her. And it turns out when Addie does remember to pick up the pig, it's not there. <gasps> Someone else has adopted the teacup pig. So the deposit means nothing. <laughs> yeah, well. And I think um, Addie had some qualms because the guy who worked there, Nathan, doesn't like her. And he's this big Star Wars nerd and stuff like that and Star Trek nerd. 
Actually, this is actually quite funny. So the reason why Nathan is ang- is annoyed at Addy because he, I think he had a crush on her. Yeah. He liked her, and so he had a note that intended for her to see, and she allegedly never got the note. Allegedly. Allegedly. With this whole teacup pig situation, there was an alleged note left. This is only for Tegan, so only Tegan can acquire this pig. And then Nathan's like, I never saw the note. Hey. <laughs> and it's just that, that's just the only the yeah. best and funny thing about this story is the, the irony of them both not getting this note and there's that little mis- bit of miscommunication and now they're friends they're buddy buddies again that's fine and then it's yeah it turns out uh, old mate myrtle had the pig but also like again could you like if you were working and like someone is like i'm getting this or whatever like hold it for me and then your boss is like okay yeah like no worries and they left the note yeah and then like the next day like say tegan comes in and complains yeah and then so it's like are you not getting fired like, yeah yeah and they've already paid for the pig yeah, as well just so because, like because like you being a little petty yeah dickhead soft boy yeah for sure <laughs> anyway so yeah myrtle christmas angel has the pig yeah all to teach addy a lesson and then addy goes on this grandiose kind of like adventure to try and find the pig as well I, get, I feel like I don't remember much about this cha- this story because I don't, don't really care about it that much. But all is well in the end. Like, yeah, Tegan gets her pig. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Addie acquires it. Oh, no, I think she just tracks Myrtle down and is like, and can I have my like, pig back? Yeah, haha, I did this to teach you a lesson. Yeah, exactly, of course, <laughs> because as all angels and Christmas miracles... As all strangers stuff, have to. <laughs> yes, of course. And so, yeah, they go back to Starbucks. She has the pig in her coat or something. And then, like, all of a sudden, every fucking character that we've met out of the mm-hmm. woodwork is at the Starbucks mm-hmm. right now. Stuart and Jubilee I mean, there. Clark and Juby. Yeah, and Clark and Juby. And <laughs> Tobin and Angie. Yeah. And Tobin hears, like, someone call Addy, Addy. Yeah. And he's like, wait, I have a message for you from Jeb. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, what? And then she's, he's like, he's coming for you or yeah. whatever. And then... Suddenly, it's a Christmas miracle. Yeah. It's a Christmas miracle. Miracle. <laughs> and Jeb comes in. Of course. And yeah. then they, kind of, they have a talk, they make up, happy ever after. Yeah. Also, oh, another funny thing in the beginning, what um, added to Addie's um, kind of wallowing is because everyone knows Chloe, and if you remember, she dated Stuart, mm. and then she's like, am I Chloe? Like, in terms of mm. a bad moral character, yeah. like, did she treat Jeb as bad as Chloe treated Stuart? Yeah. Um, in the sense of cheating so she was having a bit of an external crisis about that um but yeah that was just funny that like yeah now every character has been brought up almost in this and like yeah judy does like have like this moment of like realizing how like everyone's lives are like connected and how they've all been brought together yeah and funny all these people have been getting together on christmas again after having a year almost you know with their exes on christmas as well so it's just so funny it's a christmas miracle it it is an absolutely christmas miracle and then that's it and then that's let it snow yeah let's snow with emotions (laughs) let's snow oh in the first story there was like a tea towel that uh, said let it snow let it snow Uh, you know how much i love titles and books love it but yeah i thought it was like as i said like i do love the interconnectedness of the characters and like knowing each other but um i initially thought it was going to be the big storm and like everyone's still separated but like perhaps like walk past each other or like gave someone a ride type of thing as well mm. but no i loved it but yeah these teenagers out and about in a fucking snowstorm jeez just I know, stay stop home putting what and is wo- it and, like, don't working. take unnecessary risks <laughs> it's like don't take unnecessary journeys yeah. and don't swim in the sea. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love that sound. Especially when a celebrity dies and they start naming people. Yeah, the old people, that yeah. they don't want to die. It's so funny. Um, but yeah, ultimately, I enjoyed the book. Loved it. Yeah, I mean, yes. I love the first part of it. Yeah, except John Green's now cancelled because he said the art word. <laughs> Unlucky. I have proof I'm willing to post it. <laughs> and this episode will be out on Christmas. Or I suppose the week after christmas so yeah everyone would hopefully everyone had a, ni- had a ah! nice <laughs> jesus christ <laughs> everyone had a nice uh, holiday celebrations yeah hopefully everyone yeah had a great what do time. you hope to you, you have got I'm, well, try, I'm trying to, i'm trying to i'm trying to be funny like what did you get for christmas kenzie oh. <laughs> oh, I, well, I know what i'm getting for christmas anyway so yeah, I know. <laughs> Yeah. What are you hoping to get? Amazon gift cards yes. for, to buy the lineup for next year. Yes. 
But yeah, hopefully everyone had a great yeah Christmas holiday yeah. celebrations, whatever you want. Hopefully everyone got what they wanted. Yeah, hopefully everyone is still um, celebrating. S- yeah, still yeah. celebrating, yeah. Still partying hard. Yeah, yeah. and um, everyone's looking forward to another long weekend. Yeah, for the news. Yeah. So yeah, happy have a happy new year. Yeah. Kick on next year. We've got quite the lineup next year. I'm happy, looking forward to it. Yep. Just for a, a, a little taste, yeah. we're kicking off with from Blood and Ash. Yeah. And uh yeah, I guess we'll see you all next year. Yeah, see you next year. Bye. Bye. Yeah, thanks for listening. Um link in the bio, in the Instagram in bio. The link tree. In the link tree, yep. You'll be able to find us in all the places. Yeah, see you next year.